Let us explore three methods to find point of intersection. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we will have exam review on linear systems. Here are four questions which we are going to consider in this particular video. This is for you to prepare for linear systems exam. Question number one here is, what do you understand by POI? How will you find it? Question number two, list different methods to find POI for following systems. Three different systems are given to you. Question three, without solving, determine the number of solutions each of the following system has. So we have again taken three more systems. Question number four. Classify the linear system in question three in terms of consistent, inconsistent, and dependent systems. These are basic communication questions based on linear systems. We'll try to understand how do we answer them for getting full marks in communication. Perfect. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Let's begin with the very first one, which is, what is point of inflection, the POI, right? So, as you know, POI is a short form, which is referring to point of intersection. So, for any system, point of intersection is actually the solution. So, what do you understand by POI? POI stands for point of in intersection. So, POI is solution of a linear system. Correct. So that is what it stands for. Hello. 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 Now, a linear system may or may not have a solution, right? So, let me give you a basic linear system. Let's consider two lines, right? So, if you have two lines, one intersecting the other, in that case, we get a point of intersection. That is what we are referring to, right? POI, which is point of intersection or the solution of these two lines. Well, sometimes the lines are overlapping, right? So, we could have a system in which the lines are overlapping. So, in that case, we have all the points as common, right? So, in this case, we have infinite solutions. And in some systems, we do not have a point of intersection if the lines are parallel, correct? So, these two lines are parallel, so they do not have point of intersection, right? So, no point of intersection, no solution. Get the idea, right? So, let us move on to question number two, which is use different methods to find point of intersection for following systems. Now, how do we find point of intersection and what are the different methods? Well, one of the methods is using a graph. The second method is substitution. And the third is elimination. The last two are algebraic methods. We have three sets of systems given to us, we will see 
which one should we use for what purpose? So, a graph y equals to 2x minus 1 equals to x plus y equals to 2. This is a good candidate for a graph. You also use this system for substitution. Substituting the value of y in the second equation can easily provide us with a solution. The next one, we could, we are given y is isolated, we can substitute, right? So, we can use substitution for the next one. The third one, 2x minus 3y equals to 4 and x plus 2y equals to 9 is the right candidate for elimination method. Right? We'll actually provide the solutions for all the three and then see how, you know, since we have to use different methods. So, the best candidate which for graphing is the first one. You see that? After attending university. The winner of this year's Certificate of Achievement Shulik Leader Award is Akshi Kandilani. Great. Our student, Akshit, gets highest marks and the most prestigious Shulik Leader Award. You can be there. Join our classes and excel. So, we will use graph for the first one. Let us uh, solve them one by one. So, in the first case, we have two equations. One is y equals to 2x minus 1. The other one is given to us as, let me use a different ink, x plus y equals to 2. Now, y equals to 2x minus 1 is slope intercept form where slope m is 2 and y intercept is minus 1. For sketching, we can start with minus 1. So, let me make a scale here, right? Let us say this is minus 1, minus 2, right? And this is like plus 1, plus 2. And here we have 1 and 2. Minus 1, minus 2. Is it okay? So, we have a scale. To sketch 2x minus 1, will identify the y-intercept, which is minus 1, slope of 2. Slope of 2 means go up by 2. So, 1 and 2 and then 1 right. So, that is our next point, right? So, we got 2 up and 1 right, right? So, that is our next point. So, we can actually join these points as I am joining to sketch the line. Is it okay? You could use ruler to draw straighter lines. For the second one, which is x plus y equals to 2, how will you sketch it? Well, we know the x-intercept is 2 and y-intercept is also 2, right? So, x and y-intercept are good to use in this particular case. Joining them, we see very clearly that it goes through one common point between the two lines and that is the point of intersection. So, point of intersection for us is 1, 1, right? So, from the graph, we can read the point of intersection, which is 1, 1. You see that? So, we can sketch and find the solution, which is the point of intersection. Now, it is a good practice to check your solution. Definitely, in the question, we are not asking for it, right? But we are actually preparing for exam. So, why not? Okay, so check. So, if I substitute 1 for x, do I get y as 1? Let's put it here. So, we get what? So, y equals to 2 times 1 minus 1. Yes, we do. So, it works for equation 1, right? For equation 2, which is x plus y equals to 2, if I add 1 plus 1, I do get 2. So, that also works. So, it is the right solution. Right? So, I hope you have understood how we can use a graph to find the point of intersection. Now, let us take the second method and second set of equation. This time, we are given the equation y equals to minus 2x plus 5. 
and we are given x plus y equals to 2. So now, since we are given isolated y, that is in equation 1, we can actually substitute 1 in 2, right? So, we will sub 1 in equation 2. That is why this method is called substitution method. Very clear, right? So, it gives you x plus y is minus 2x plus 5 equals to 2. You can now simplify, right? So, we get x minus 2x plus 5 equals to 2. Isolate and get your answer. So, x minus 2x, let me rewrite. And we can say 2 minus 5, which is minus x equals to minus 3 or x is equal to 3. So, once we get the value of x, let me call this as equation 3. We can substitute in 2, right? To find y. So, what do we get? Let's substitute. So, if I substitute 3 for x, we get 3 plus y equals to 2. And that gives you the value of y as 2 minus 3 or minus 1. And therefore, we have our solution. So, what is the solution? So, clearly, the solution is x value of 3, y value of minus 1. Correct? You can check with 3 and minus 1. Both equations are satisfied. Perfect. So, I hope this step is also clear, right? Well, it is as simple as that. So, in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Most of my students are doing extremely well. They are right there on top of their class, getting awards and scholarships like Akshat. Let us now continue with the next example. This time, we have the equation 2x minus 3y equals to 4. That's equation 1. And the second one is x plus 2y equals to 9. We are going to use the method of elimination to answer. Now, to eliminate, I have to multiply the second equation by a term so that we get the same coefficients for first and second. 2 is a good candidate, right? So, if I do so, I get what? I get 2x plus 4y equals to 18. Now, we call this as equation 3. And we can subtract equation 3 from 1, right? So, we'll do equation 1 minus equation 3. Once you do that, what do you get? 2x and 2x gets eliminated. Minus 3y minus 4y is what you get on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, it is 4 minus 18. Correct. Now, we can actually solve it easily. Minus 3y minus 4y gives me minus 7y and on the right hand side, 4 minus 18 is minus 14. So, that gives me y equals to minus 14 over minus 7 or y is 2. So, we have the value of y. To find x, use any one of these equations, right? So, let us use equation 2, which is x plus 2y equals to 9. So, x is basically 9 minus 2y. Substituting y as 2, we get what? We get 9 minus 4, which is 5. And therefore, the solution is 5, 2. Makes sense. See how easily we could solve this equation using elimination method. Now, elimination method is very good when it's difficult to isolate y without fractions. You get the idea. Fractions involve a lot of calculations, right? So, this is a simpler method. So, you are there with me, right? Perfect. So, we have understood what is point of inflection and how do we find point of inflection using three different methods in this particular video. In the next video, we will talk about solutions of linear systems and also introduce you to another term which is about consistency, right? Classify linear system as consistent, inconsistent and dependent system. So let's take that up in part 2 of this video. I hope you have understood complete solution of the first two questions which involved 
understanding what is point of inflection and how do we calculate the point of intersection or find the point of intersection using different methods. All the three methods which are graph, substitution, elimination were taken care of. I hope the concepts are absolutely clear. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. In case you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.